Good morning, team. It is Tuesday, August 10th. Thank you for joining us on another amazing summer day. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck, and we're live out of the Goose Island office. We have a great topic this morning, so grab your drink of choice, and let's jump into another episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. That's right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Amy. Grab your coffee like we are, and we're set to begin this episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Today, we're going to be talking about the market and our relationship with the market. And here's the key. Let's be real about what's happened over the last 16 months. Some of us are having banner years, whether it started last year or it's really kicked in this year. A lot of great things have been happening. But if we take a step back, we have to think through what have we done to create this wave of real estate profitability and volume generation? What have we done intentionally to create that? Or are we riding the wave? We've talked about this a little bit over the past few weeks, but the key here is we know the wave is going to end. We know the market stability is going to come. We know that that could mean that these banner years and months that we've had, where we've been selling properties in two days for 110% of list price, it's not going to be here forever. So we need to realize what are we going to do so that we don't follow the wave down? What are we going to do to make sure that the momentum that the market has given us allows us to harness that momentum and continue propelling ourselves rather than riding back down to where we were at the beginning of 2020. So today we've got three things we wanna share with you. And all of these come from success stories that agents have shared with us. All of these are real life stories that agents have sent to us and we've talked with them about that you can implement into your business to make sure that you carry the momentum into the rest of 2021, into 2022 and beyond. That's right, Kevin. We get a lot of feedback from agents about what they're doing right now to move their business forward. And we've got three great examples of agents who are simply deciding to do things right now, regardless of how crazy the market is, to make sure that they are teeing their business up for success, no matter what happens in the next six to 12 months. So the first example is a broker that shared with us uh, in details on really focusing on buyers at open houses. And she had recently taken our perfect open house class a couple of months ago. And she recognized what we were saying in there is that oftentimes as agents, when we are sitting in open, we may engage with unrepresented buyers. But then when we follow up, we only usually reach out two, maybe three times. And after we don't hear anything back, we kind of just decide, eh, I guess I'm going to move on because these people may not be interested in working with me. In that class, we talk about focusing on the long game when it comes to buyers at open houses. We tend to only do initial outreach a handful of times, but research shows that you usually have to reach out to a buyer a minimum of 12 times before they actually engage. So this particular agent said that they tried our eight by 12, which means reaching out to somebody 12 times in an eight week time period. And what she shared with us is that because she focused on the long game, she now is is actively engaging with two buyers that she met at open houses. But what she shared with us is that they didn't respond back or engage back with her until weeks eight and then week 10. So think about it. The power is in the long game when you are working open houses and you are trying to convert buyers. You should be staying in front of them a minimum of 12 times before you expect that maybe they aren't interested at all. So think about it. It's something that does work, but what I love is that this agent actually tried it and saw success with two buyers. Again, she she didn't connect with them until week eight or week 10. So think about and focus on the long game in your business. It isn't always your timing. Oftentimes it is the timing of a buyer or a seller, and that's when they're ready to engage. I love that so much because it's true. So many of us reach out once or twice and then give up and expected, you know, we expect these great results from very little effort. So I love that. And I love that class. Second, uh, we want to talk about social media. Now, I have a couple stories here from agents about social media specifically. The first comes from an agent with us who has high stress about social media. And let's face it, a lot of us have a hard time with social media. It's not top of mind or we overthink it, meaning we're so concerned about what we're going to post that we never post anything, that we never do anything because we're always planning and we got to make it perfect. Here's the jam. I was talking with this agent and they said that they spent two weeks trying to decide what they were going to post. 
okay, that's 14 days that has gone by where no exposure has been created. So when talking with this agent, I give them some simple solutions, places where they could go to get content and keeping it top of mind. If they see something cool, if they see something in a property, if they are with a client, just snapping a photo, taking a photo right then and there and being cognizant that it doesn't need to be perfection to be on social media. It needs to be authentic and it needs to be something that reflects your brand, something that you would want everyone to see that creates exposure for you and whether it's personal or professional. The second story I have is an agent who is struggling with social media, like so many of us do, like this first agent we were talking with. The second agent set up a plan where three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, before they begin their day, this is the, one of the very first things they do, is they post on social media. And so that forced this agent, before they could start their day, to actually not overthink it and find content to post. And with that, and this sounds wild, but she shared with us, from this exposure she's created now over the last couple of months, she's actually able to attribute that social media exposure to one listing, at least, and two other opportunities, and also two buyers that now she will begin working with over the next couple of months into the end of 2021. So social media, when we don't, when we don't overthink it, when we actually use the content that's available, if you're with App Properties, you know Content Hub, if you have other sources for content, don't overthink it, keep it top of mind, snap a photo, put it on social media, create exposure for yourself and your brand. And as long as it's authentic, and as long as it represents you, you will create exposure for yourself that will make you more attractive. I love it. It's the whole idea of don't overthink it. And it actually tees us up for our third example. And this is in relation to grand gestures. I absolutely love grand gestures because it's the opportunity to get in front of clients or your sphere of influence and just really develop and build your relationships with them. So this third example came from a top producing agent uh, at VAT Properties. And he shared with us that just a couple of weeks ago, he ordered 20 pizzas and he had them delivered. Actually, he delivered them to his 20 top clients or people in his sphere of influence. He just sent them a note the day before and basically said, listen, dinner's on me tomorrow night. I'm going to be dropping off a pizza at around six o'clock. So be ready. And I'll look forward to seeing you there. It didn't take him a lot of time. It probably cost him 20, maybe 25 bucks uh, to, to purchase each pizza, but he was able to get in front of 20 of his most important people. It didn't take a lot of overthinking. It didn't take a lot of planning, but he said the engagement that he got and the opportunity to reach out to some of his really important people who drive his business forward was really significant and important. Now, he did have an edit, added layer, which you can think about, but you don't need to do in order to uh, replicate what his example is. He also had pizza cutters with his brand on it. So when he dropped the pizza off, he included his team pizza cutter uh, as well, so that they had that as a reminder of his him and all that he can offer in regards to real estate. But you don't even have to do that. Just keep it really simple. It can be anything that you drop by, but just think about doing something really easy that makes impact. You can do it in a matter of days or even in a week. I love that so much. The keeping it simple allows us to actually complete and do things that create an impact, right? A great example that I heard someone doing uh, that goes right hand in hand with the pizzas is every Saturday morning before they started their day, whether it was open houses or buyer tours or showings, whatever it was, they would go to their local donut shop, pick up a dozen donuts and drop it off at one client's house, one referral source's house, just one every Saturday. And just think about that. If you do that 40 times a year, that's 40 people that you are dropping off donuts and creating this grand gesture for that takes very little time and effort. And that's the key here, right? It's really about adding that extra layer, the one extra step, the extra degree, if you're familiar with 212 degrees in that series, it's adding that one extra step that could have an enormous impact where instead of riding the real estate wave back to stability, you continue to keep the momentum and keep the velocity going. So thank you for joining us today. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week and fill up your coffee. Bye team. Make it a great Tuesday. We'll see you next week.